Assalamualaikum guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to one more video on the Linux topic. So in this video exactly, uh, we're going to be creating dynamic routing using OSPF or Linux machine. So for this, I'm going to be actually creating a new uh, Ubuntu machine from scratch, just to make sure that everything, everything works the same on my machine and on yours. So uh, let's actually go ahead with the new button and I'm going to call it uh, whatever you want, like machine machine zero and choose the EOS to Linux one to 64 just uh, I want this to be like two gigabytes so yeah uh, now I've created it uh, the first thing I want to change the network to set it to a uh, bridge adapter to be able to connect the machine second uh, I'm gonna choose the ISO file from which we're gonna load the um, the installation OS so I'm just gonna start, uh, choose the Ubuntu live server hit OK and for now yeah that's it uh, we're gonna be actually using different machines uh, okay so yeah start uh, we're gonna be using different machines uh, so first I'm just gonna set up this first machine zero and then I'm just gonna clone it to more than one machine and do this so while the uh, machine boots up, I'm just gonna fast forward this part. So as you can see, the machine had boot up. I'm just gonna hit the default settings, language to English. Uh, this is actually our IP address that we're gonna use later. So yeah, don't change anything. I'll continue that updating and just choose the default for everything. And here, just get the credentials. So actually, the server name. Uh, we're gonna have more than one server name. So this one is gonna be machine zero. Username. Okay. Yeah. And we're done. Uh, so let's stage because we're gonna use it. And okay. So as you can see, the installation has started. Uh, while the installation is going, I wanted to talk about the uh, host networks because we're gonna be using them. To, uh, uh, we're gonna actually have a network or an interface network between these vir three virtual machines that we're gonna have and through this network we're, they're gonna communicate so for this we need host uh, network to, we need to create one so as you can see I already have them created but I'm just gonna show you how you can create one first you just click on the create button and as you can see, anyone has been created. Assign whatever IP address here you want if you want to change the default IP address given. So just go ahead and change it. And here, just enable the DNSP server so that your machine gets an IP address once it gets once it connects to the machine. So uh, also here in the DNSP server, uh, well, we don't have to change anything right here because um, by default this will actually work for us. But Actually, to, to, to not waste uh, IP addresses, I'm just going to set this to zero and the lower bound to zero. So, yeah, and hit apply. Oh, yeah, I believe this is because I can't set it to zero, I can just set it to one. Yeah, now it works. So, uh, let's now check the Ubuntu. Uh, I'm just going to fast forward until the installation has completed. So now the installation has finished, uh, now just reboot, uh, hit enter, and fast forward the reboot part. So as you can see the machine booted up, okay, where is my mouse, yeah, oh actually the machine is kind of lagging, so yeah, now it's working, I think so, yeah, it's again lagging, <laughs> oops. So yeah, ah, it's actually lagging because I'm getting back in and out because just pausing the video and coming back. So it's actually just work now. Yeah, now it works. So now as you can see, I have logged in and I have the following IP address 192.168.0.151. So I'm not going to be actually using this terminal because it's not convenient. Uh, for this, I'm going to be using my main machine terminal, so uh, 192.168.151, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, hit yes, type the password, 
and we're on this machine now so we're gonna be installing some tools so the first thing we want to install is uh, net tools and after so we have to install the uh, FR package which we're gonna be using to uh, set up this OSPF but the installation has many commands so instead of you just memorizing everything uh, we're going to be using a gist file that I've created I'm going to be leaving the link for this gist in the description down below so all we have to do to install it is just run this script this script actually uh, is just a container of all the other commands that you're going to be we're going to be using so as you can see it has started installing so yeah it's almost finished yeah and it has finished so now let's actually uh, see the status of the FFR package as you can see it's uh, active and running and here we have one bug which is zebra bit find not found uh, which we're going to be fixing right now so first we need to edit the file at etc frr and here we have a file called diamonds or like Demons, I mean, like, so this is actually like the processes that uh, run with the FR command. So, as I said, we're going to be setting up OSPF, so we need to turn this up. Yes, we're not going to be using version 6, but just let's just set it to yes also. And here at Zebra, this is the uh, daemon that it couldn't load, so yeah, Zebra like this. And now, uh, here just restart. So just ask for the password, application complete. Now let's see the status. As you can see now everything is working without any kind of uh, bugs or errors. So uh, now let's actually shut down this machine because we're going to be changing the uh, the network settings of this machine. So we have to turn it off and I'm just waiting it to turn off. Well anyway, let's just start. So we click on settings, network. And here we only have one network. Oh, I can't add networks until the machine uh, turns off. Ah, I actually ran reboot instead of shutdown. Okay, so it does just power it off then. Yeah. So uh, now we hit network, and here we're just gonna add three more networks. So the first network, uh, as I said, we're gonna be using the host only adapter. So as you can see here, here you can choose the network adapter that you have created and let me just show you how this is gonna be in a nano file real quick so we have three machines like machine 0, machine 1 and machine 2 each one of them has uh, a private network and a public one so for example since I've already created like a uh, private host from 0 to 6 well actually to 5 now we have 6 networks so I'm just gonna assign the first one and the uh, third and fourth for the first machine and also connect the second machine to the first network and the third and fifth for example and the last one to the second network and to the fourth and the fifth so after doing so what do we get we get a private network for each machine right here and we get uh, like each machine is gonna have two connections with the other two so in total each machine has like three connections three interfaces so let's actually do this so here I'm gonna choose uh, VirtualBox 0 and there I'm gonna choose uh, VirtualBox 3 and there uh, holds only adapter and here choose 4 so this actually for the first machine we're gonna change these uh, configurations for the other machine but for now we're just setting up one machine so now let's boot it up so yeah now it had booted up so let's actually go connect to it uh, let's just close this as a stage so now if we actually use the ifconfig command as you can see it's only showing one IP address despite we have more than one network so if I for example do uh, IP address show 
as you can see here we have three networks but three of them are down so to actually add them to the um, to turn them up and make them enable there are actually more than one way to do this I'm gonna do it kind of in an old way using the uh, net plan so I'm just gonna edit the file at etc net plan there's just one file there so what I'm you know, gonna be doing here we only have one interface which is the bridge connection so I'm just gonna add three yeah uh -huh. so here I'm just gonna add uh, yeah, now we are on the same level. This actually I am a file, so uh, spaces here do matter. So here we enable the eighth interface, the ninth, and the tenth. Hit Control Save and close this file. So to make sure that we didn't make any kind of mistakes, I'm gonna run netplan try. And as you can see, it's showing that we have error somewhere at region two. Uh huh. I see. Probably I've deleted something error in memory definition so I believe this is an uh, error with the oops uh, an error with the YAML configuration yeah so this actually version should be on the Ethernet level but on the network level so hit now control save and let's try to try yeah now it actually works so I'm just gonna hit enter and to load this well let's see maybe it has loaded already so if config and as you can see, we have already connected to the machines, uh, or like the we got an IP address for each machine. So uh, this is all for this part. Now the second part, this machine is already uh, ready for the FFR, but we have to actually now clone this machine to to the two more machines. So first, I'm just gonna actually not shut down, but just power off this time. So yeah, now I've booted this machine off. Uh, what I'm gonna be doing is just gonna be hitting clone and here name this to like machine one and click next uh, by the way here it's preferred actually to use generate new MAC addresses for networks so hit next clone this is gonna actually take a while so fast forward this part also so as you can see now I have uh, cloned this machine so now let's actually run these three machines and now actually by default uh, the IP address is going to be incremented so I already know which IP address do they have uh, so I'm just going to be opening term my terminal oops this is the terminal terminal so uh, the first thing I'm going to connect to the first machine and then I'm going to SSH to the second machine it's just going to have the same IP address of the previous one plus one so it's just incrementing so and the last machine is going to be at 53 so yeah uh, now as you can see we've got assigned some IP addresses right so the first thing I'm gonna do uh, as you can see these three machines have the same host name so this actually is not good it's not convenient for work so let's actually change the host name. Uh, for this, we can use the host name ctl command and set set home name. And here we can specify to machine one. Yeah. Now hit enter. It requires the password. Okay. Now I have to reboot, but I'm gonna actually do a shutdown because we need to edit the uh, configuration files of uh, the network, the network connections of this machine. And the same thing here, so let's just fast forward. So yeah, now I've chosen my ho the host name and part of this machine. Now let's go to the virtual box. Uh, what we're gonna do is actually, if we look here at the bottom, we can see that this virtual machine has the following networks, and actually the three machines have the same networks. So we need to actually change this. So let's go to settings, networks, and here I just set this to one. And this one to uh, well we can leave it actually to three and pick just uh, the last one to be five and hit OK and our, our next machine we go to settings network and yeah here we choose the second network and the now we have already chose three and five so now let's just pick four and five 
Now hit OK. Uh, now actually these three machines are ready. Now let's just turn them on. So now actually the machines probably had booted up. So I'm gonna just go SSH. This one's 5.2. So as you can see now it's showing us uh, 5 one. Yeah, it's actually showing us machine one. And there on this one. Now showing us oh yeah because actually I wrote I wrote uh one five three it should be one five four no, or maybe one five two hmm I probably named the two machines with the same name so yeah uh so this is this which one actually this is one five two okay this is for sure the machine one so now uh let's just do a quick host name ctl uh, we can just scroll up yeah now we do yeah actually we wrote here machine one by mistake so this should be machine two and just let's make a reboot until we discuss what we're going to be doing next so now uh first we're going to be editing the configuration file of the frr using something called vty shell so to open your vty shell you need sudo and vty shell uh, here we're going to be using uh, some specific commands. These are not default Linux command. This is the like it's a different shell with different commands. So let's actually open it here also. So sudo vty shell. This is not my machine. This is the this is my host, not the virtual machine. So uh, okay. So this is yeah machine one. So yeah, I actually renamed them by mistake. So whatever. Uh, and this one should be at one five three. No, like at one five two. No, this is now machine two. So uh, now let's actually go to sudo vty shell. So yeah, and here we sudo uh, vty shell also. So now as you can see, we have these three v2y shell open so uh, actually the commands that I'm going to be typing you don't have to memorize they're going to be actually uh, right here so uh, and this is also the same git uh, the same gist file that I'll that has it and the description down below so actually uh, let me just take it because these commands I just kind of forget them by time so uh, the first thing is actually to open the configuration terminal. So whether you like, whether you type config terminal or just in short TC uh, or CT. So actually the first thing here, we're gonna be specifying a router ID for this machine. And uh, we just have to choose the, uh, what type of routers we're gonna be using. So it's OSPF and then set the router ID to whatever, actually you can here specify whatever number, but I'm just gonna use one on one. And for the rest, I'm gonna use like 222, 333, and so on. So yeah. And then after this, we need to actually set the ID of the interface. Whoa. This is actually a lot of, I mean, probably some typos there. Okay, let's just copy this single line. Yeah, now it works. I just probably click something else. So yeah, here we need to actually specify which IP address this machine is going to be using. So for this, I don't actually remember uh, what are the IP addresses, so I'm just going to connect to the machine. And now, as you can see, the IP uh, EMP 0s8 is at 52.5. So I'm going to be typing here the 192.168.52. You don't have here to t specify the same IP address that this one is using. Okay, because um, we're gonna actually be using different, um, what do they call it, like different IP addresses. So it's okay to specify another one. Okay, so now what we're gonna be changing is the interface now. And then here on the ninth is actually 55. And I'm gonna leave this to like, uh, like this. And the last one is 56. So this is actually you know, the first port. Now we have to now exit you gonna have to exit and open the router again we're gonna be adding uh, more configurations 
so I wrote exit yeah yeah everything is right so uh, set like get into the router ID now we're gonna be adding a network uh, this time we're just gonna be adding the default name so as you can see here we're just gonna be copying this pasting it here and just changing this to zero so this is just network ID we can say so on here specify the area they're gonna be on the same area now hit enter so yeah actually I have just to make this full screen yeah I made it here I forgot to dot here so yeah and now just change this to now 55 and to 56 so basically uh, after we have finished this now we go to write memory just to save our settings so I'm just gonna type end and write memory hit enter and as you can see the configurations have been saved here in this file so let's actually hit control D and now let's actually print the content of this file so etc frr and it's gonna it's called rconf.conf so yeah if I actually zoom out a bit well if we zoom out a bit we see these uh, are the configurations that we have set right now so uh, actually we're not gonna be oh actually we have an exit right here because we like exit from this interface on editing I think so yeah that's actually everything for this interface so instead of doing the same thing on the other machines and typing all these commands well, I'm just gonna copy this block right here oops just copy this block with control shift C and then go to the other machine the sudo nano this file which is f4 f4.conf so yeah now I'm just gonna make a simple editing to this file uh, don't forget that we actually have to change the IP addresses so for this oops yeah so for this actually we already have this term no no this one we have one else so here uh, we need to actually connect to machine one which is what with the this IP address so yeah as you can see now let's just do it like this oops so yeah uh, now we're gonna change this to 152 here's this 154 and here it's uh, 56 and 57 so here 56 and 57 but if you remember uh, on the previous machine we said the 56 dot 1 to the first machine so for this one I'm gonna set it to dot 2 so that they have different IP addresses and here at the bottom I'm just gonna change the IP address of uh, the, the router address to 222 and now hit control save and now just check that everything is working with restart system CTL restart FRR service so let's just take the status that it's working fine and yep everything is working it doesn't it, it didn't load with any kind of bugs so what I'm gonna be doing right now is doing the same thing with the third machine so uh, I'm just gonna be actually fast forwarding this part and uh, come back when I've already typed everything so yeah uh, now as you can see I've edited this file but just remember to set the IP address so on the first on the first machine that we've used the uh, 192.168.55 the first time we used this network we set the IP address to dot one so since this machine is just connecting to the same network so we're just giving it a different ID so and here I'm actually forgot to change this to 3.33 and yeah actually uh, yeah we also need to edit these so 5557 and the same thing on the other machine because I probably made a mistake right here so 545657 yeah so it actually it doesn't matter in which order in which order you write them but it's just to make them on the same order so yeah now let's just restart this mm -hmm. and now let's also restart it here so 
to start uh, for the service. Let's do this. Yeah, working. And let's do the same. Actually, we don't have to because we've already saved it from this place. So now what we're going to do is is actually just close all these terminals that we're not using. And yeah, okay. Now what? Uh, now let's open this VTY shell. Also open the VTY shell here. So sudo VTY shell. Sudo VTY shell. Okay, now what, what do we should do? Uh, actually, now let's see if we can actually see these other machines. So uh, to do so, we type show IP and we're using the OSPF protocol. And now I'm gonna be using Grout to show you the routes that we have. So as you can see, I have, uh, I'm seeing two machines right here. So on network 10, uh, yeah, so I'm actually, seeing one machine on network 10, which is at 56.10. No, it's not this one. Mm. But this is probably the, the, the this machine. So let's actually do the same output here. Route uh, was PF. So yeah, it's actually, uh, I believe these two machines are connected. So now let's actually check the third one and do uh, show IP was PF. Uh, what was it? Let's actually, yeah, route. And as you can see, this one is not connecting to any of them because these are the default connections of this machine itself. And on the first machine, if we did show IP OSPF neighbor to see which neighbors does this see, so it only sees the router 2.2.2, so which is actually this one. And if we do the same thing on this machine, we get we get only the first router. So as if this machine is not working. So for this actually, um, I got stuck with this problem before. So to fix it, all you have to do is just change the network type. So we go to actually to virtual box. Uh, we probably need to, no, we don't need to actually turn off the machines off. So go to the first machine and just hit network. And as you can see, instead of host adapter, I'm just gonna change this to internal network. If you, as you can see here, you can just choose whatever networks. If you don't have, you can just create them. So here we had the host only address of one. So just to keep the same naming, I'm just gonna hit internal network and choose here one. And on virtual box, uh, it was virtual box three, so internal network three. And the same with the last one, so internal network and five. So now if we hit enter, as you can see, the network types have changed. So I'm just gonna do this to the other two machines and come back. So now guys, if you actually look, I've actually already uh, changed the networks to the uh, new interfaces. Now what should we do is just reload or like restart these three machines. So I'm just gonna select the three machines and hit, uh, we don't have actually a restart here. So I'm just gonna hit power off and then boot them up again. So fast forward the boot and restart port. So now as you can see the three machines have booted up. So now let's get connect, uh, connect to them. So this is the first machine, the second machine, and the third machine. Yeah, it was correct at 152. So yeah, now what we should do is just open the BTY shell again sudo bty shell and now actually let's check what neighbors does this machine see so show ip ospf and let's see route as you can see now uh, we have around six routes because now it sees the uh, two other two machines not only one but bo but both so ospf now um, we need to check actually neighbors and now it's seeing both let's do the same thing on the um, on the other two machines to check whether they're seeing this. So the actually the router, the router one that one that one that one sees the other two routers. Now let's check whether the other routers sees this uh, first router. So uh, actually we need show IP OSPF route. Actually it has the same thing. So it has like but just different 
uh, machines that with different routes it's connected to different machines with different IP addresses and now if we do uh, neighbors as you can see these are the neighbors of this machine so uh, last thing was just checking this on the third machine so uh, now show IP OSPF route so yeah it's the same thing and it just I mean like the same output but the difference is just in the IP addresses the IP addresses so uh, OSPF neighbors so as you can see here it has the neighbors of 1.1.1.1 and 2 and like quarter quarter 2 so yeah this is how to make uh, dynamic routing using OSPF and okay guys that's actually all for this video thank you for watching and see you on the next one